Good morning and welcome to our live talk program. This is Lloyd Grubb here, your host on Revive Reform Radio, doing our live talk program covering motivation on your Monday morning rise and shine. And this Monday morning here, we're looking at the topic, overcome your bad habit and failure before death. Overcome your bad habit and failure before death is what we're looking at here this morning. As a look at motivation and hopefully this will be a blessing to you and yours as you begin the, this work week. So overcoming your bad habit and um, failure before death is our motivation here for this morning here as I encourage you to live a life of an overcomer in Jesus Christ this moment Monday morning. So welcome again and thanks for joining me here. Let us pray. Our Father, words in heaven, we thank thee again, dear Lord, for your love. We thank you, dear Lord, for your ways and your word and things that you teach us in the Bible. May you bless us, dear Lord, as we talk and study together this morning. And thank you again for all those who are here. And may your grace go with us, we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. So again, welcome to this morning talk program as we do our live talk from um, <laughs> Monday through Friday. And this morning here, most essentially, we're looking at this um, topic of motivation, which is to overcome your bad habits your bad habit and I put a singular there because many times it's um, probably like that it's probably singular so overcome your bad habit before death is our talk here for this morning as we look at it now um, the basic idea here that I want to convey is that most die do not overcome in their major character defect and propensity to sin or a particular sin so most die not overcoming their major character defect so there's each of us have something that we have to overcome it's almost like a task it's like a task that's given to us and we have to um, succeed at this task um, and this task here will um, be a blessing if we do overcome it and there are many things that we're weak in there are many things that we have a problem with but often there could be one thing that is um plaguing us plaguing us in our character um plaguing us in our relationships and this thing here we have to overcome it and if we don't um we will die with it now the problem here in life is that as you know that most people uh most individual most of us living on this earth will die not um winning at this task not um gaining the victory so that's part of the problem so most of us will as one of the things I've learned over the years is that um, whatever addictions a person get themselves into, especially in their younger years, they will normally live and die with that addiction. And so that is not the way it should go. And I find it interesting as I'm going to look at some of these texts with you here this morning, that the story of the Bible is a story of um, basically um, different individuals overcoming at the end. So different individuals overcoming at the end is the major story of the Bible. So when you study the Bible and you look at the life stories, the, the issue there at the life stories is that whatever defect is plaguing a person, the figure that is being highlighted in the Bible, um, the story is put there and the story there, the primary stories is that the person overcome overcome at either multiple times in their life or they overcome a big test and the bible puts this there for our encouragement so this is something i often will go back to in my personal dealing because i realize that this is a struggle that each person has we all have challenges that we have to face we have weaknesses that we have to overcome we have fears that we have we have um various different challenges as we go through life but as we are faced with each of these challenges and we deal with them um we could go through the whole, whole of our life and um uh, go through the whole of our life and as we go through the whole of life we basically are constantly faced with the same challenge and if we don't overcome it the fear is that we could die with this weakness or this bad habit and we never gain the victory and as i say when you study the bible you find very quickly that the stories of the Bible, the stories of 
men and women who are like us but yet they struggled with whatever weakness whatever challenge that they had in life whatever bad habits that they had whatever fears they had and they will be given multiple opportunities to overcome it and for most of the times in the bible they would overcome at last now there's some stories in the bible where the individual die and the thing that was plaguing them become their curse and their destruction but this morning you want to encourage you to not end your life story like that although that's a possibility but whatever your fears whatever your weaknesses whatever your propensity to sin that in the name of the lord jesus christ and as you work and pray and study and do all you can to overcome that and not die with that weaknesses so that's um, our motivation for this morning i will be doing as i share these bible passages and these thoughts with you now in first corinthians chapter 9 verse 22 through 27 first corinthians 9 verse 22 through 27 it says to the weak became i weak that i may gain the weak i have made all things i have i am made all things to all men that i might by all means save some so here paul introduced this idea here that to the weak i became weak sometimes we are weak always fearful always want to be at the back and at the front and if this is your challenge paul says he became that so that he can win that so he's acknowledging that this could be a challenge of yours can gain strength can have strength can fight the battles that is placed before you and so the Lord says, look, I'll try to send somebody that is strong. And he's going to make himself become weak. He's going to relate to your weaknesses so that he can help you to gain victory. Verse 23 says, and this do I for the gospel's sake, that I might be partakers thereof with you. So here Paul says he partakes of the gospel with us. Whatever he needs to do, to be able to partake he does it see paul most naturally was not a weak person so paul had to learn humility he had to learn weakness he had to learn that christ can make him strong even in his weakness and lord put an infirmity on him that he had to live and die with and this was his struggle he he basically related to those that were not in his position and that to me would be his challenge because as you read about him he, he says obviously this was not me um i was very strong i did what i wanted and i was very vicious that's paul um life before christ but he learned humility by the things he suffered he said and so he became weak and so he partake of the gospel and so as i say no matter who who we are we all have a challenge in life and we all have to face our challenges as we face our challenges um the more serious we take them is the more we realize this is our task in life somebody said my task in life is to be car a carpenter it's not you this is a job you do your major task in life if you study the bible you look at your personal life whatever it is that's dogging you that's uh, bothering you all your life that makes people look at you a certain way that make you you know fail at things that is your challenge that's your task that you need to face and to overcome and when you do this god will bless you in ways that is phenomenal <laughs> so this is your responsibility now verse 24 know ye not that they which run in a race run all but one receiveth the prize so run that you may receive or obtain and everyone that strive for the mastery is temperate in all things now they do to obtain a corruptible crown but we an incorruptible i therefore so run not as uncertainly so fight i not as one that beat at the air but i keep on my body and bring it into subjection lest that by any means when i have preached to others i myself should be a cast away so paul says that the, the, the thing that we have to struggle most with is this issue of self-control we have to bring our body onto the subjection uh, because without self-control the whatever we are faced with normally it breaks down right there on the issue of not able to control ourselves 
whatever it is, whatever the weakness we, we, we find ourselves, the moment we hit our face, face to face, where we have to make that decision to step forward and deal with this thing, all of a sudden, without self-control, we just break down and we just give in, and whatever it is. And so in your life, you have to know what is your weakness. It's also important for you to know what is your strength. But what is your weakness? Normally, pride makes it hard for us to acknowledge our weaknesses and acknowledge what it is that's dogging us, what it is that's bothering us. So if somebody say you're just worthless, you have to know, am I worthless? And then you say, I'm going to have to work against that. I'm going to have to ask God to help me not to be worthless anymore. And that can be so generic. Somebody say you're a bum, you're just like you're... You're, you're a person that whenever the, 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 the troubles get heavy and the fires get hot, you you basically sell out. You're a sellout. If things get too heavy, you will sell out. To, you will sell out man and God. You have to ask yourself a question. Am I a sellout? When troubles get hot, when I'm needed to be counted on, do I always fail? And then that's your task for life. Because normally whatever task we have or whatever... Whatever we have to overcome is normally something that is repetitive. It's something that we do quite often. You know, somebody say, you know, I have a temper. Well, that's your task. That's your thing. You need to go deal with that on a regular basis. And you'll find over and over again, you'll be challenged on this. Troubles will come your way. And this is where you fail a will. If somebody, as I say, is a person that's easily fearful, the moment trouble comes, they panic and they run away and they melt. You gotta be able to face your phobias and face your fears. And that is gonna be your challenge in life. So somebody say I thought my challenge in life is just to pay the bills. No, that's not something else you do. It's just your, your your way of making money and serving the fellow your fellow human beings. So you remember as we're gonna read all the stories in the Bible that we read, we find that each and every single one of the characters in the Bible had a challenge that they had to face. Um, most of them, as is written in the Bible, are those who overcame. Some didn't, but each of them have a different challenge. It could be that they're faithless. It could be that they're, you know, there's some peop people I've, I've, I've dealt with, I've noticed that they have a, if they can't get their way, they, they, they basically become very, very depressed. I don't know if you've ever seen this. A person that can't get his way or her way. It's, they don't lash out, they just get very depressed. And they just be, just give up because they have to get things their way. And so if you're that person, you have to know, oh my, this is my challenge. I can't always get my way. I have to learn to deal with it when I don't get my way. I, I can't take no so hard in the chin. I can't, when a person comes to me, I say, my idea, it stinks. It's, it's a foolish idea. It's dumb. I can't feel like I need to commit suicide over that. Or start hating on somebody because they say the idea is a dumb idea. Or they tell me no, or they tell me no way, no way possible. You got to deal with that. Because if you don't, it becomes your uh, basically failure in the whole life because your life can't move forward because you find it so hard. There's some people that find it almost totally impossible to ever say, I'm, I'm wrong. I said something wrong. I did something wrong. I made a mistake. Um, not even made a mistake, I made a bad decision and I just tripped up or I knew what I was doing that I was going to do this thing but it messed me up, I'm sorry it's just very difficult and they'll go through life basically blaming even a dog everybody they blame and when you're in that situation your task in life, your job your 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 overcoming point I should say that your job is your overcoming point is that you got to face this reality and you got to Whip this thing like Abraham, and the Lord will give you multiple tests. And you'll find yourself that each and every time the Lord gives you the test, the Lord is bringing the test back around to you. And you'll have an opportunity to take the, take the test again. But there comes a point where, you know, life could run out. That is why I say you need to overcome these things before you die. Like David, like Solomon, some people, they go all the way to the brink, look over the precipice, and pull back because they almost die and failing. Very important. And as I say, 
we're going to keep going here, but I want you to think about this with me. Um, that sh I'm not screaming this here. I want to talk to you about this because this is your task in life. This is whatever weakness is. It could be a weakness that was given to you by your parents or it could be a weakness as I often uh, um, recount here. Something that you develop, a bad habit that you develop that if your parents don't know where you get it from, but you got it. Either they give it to you or you gave it to yourself. Whatever it is, whether it be cultivated or inherited weakness to sin, it is your task to overcome that sin or overcome that tendency to sin. In Hebrews 12, Hebrews 12, verse 1 through 4, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So each of us have a race that is set before us. You have a task. Say you're a person that is very disorganized. You're going to find over and over again that's going to mess you up straight through your life. And that's your task. That's the race that's been set before you. You need to witness. You need to overcome this. And you'll find that this thing will affect your job. It'll affect your, your relationships. It'll affect everything in your life, you know. And, and you'll you'll know it because I'm gonna tell you if you if this is one of your failure, you'll have even people just come around you at your work, at your home, and then readily uh, uh, realize, wait a minute, this is all kind of how do you navigate this place? This is confusing. And you hear one time you're like, ah, this person that is always hard on me. And after a while you hear it ten and twenty times, you realize, wait a minute, people always observe this readily about me. And you start to learn what your task is, that this thing here is a problem. And you can keep ignoring it and say, ah, I'm not going to face this thing. And it will be your problem straight through your life. And you could end up dying because of it. Someone say, how? Uh, because you trip up over the clutter that you have created and knock your head and then die from a concussion. And that's how life goes. And you say, they say, why did a person die? And die because the same thing that was dogging them the whole life, it followed them straight through life. And they die that way. Remember, most people who are have an addiction, whether it be to alcohol or drugs or whatever, they don't overcome their addiction. They try to manage it until they die. And that's the problem with life. You don't want to be on that statistic. You want to be that person that your story could be put in the Bible. Because as I say, the most important parts of the Bible is actually the life stories. The stories of how somebody, no matter how horrible their life was, or no matter how good their life started out and went bad, is that person overcame. This is why I always say the gospel is for everyone. But primarily read the Bible. The Bible tells you a story of a young hero, and he's great, and then they'll follow him. As he gets older, you will see how the bad habits develop as he gets older. And sometimes he will overcome, sometimes he will fail. But you want to be that person that no matter what your past was, no matter how glorious it was, no matter how terrible it was, you are winning victories. Remember the Bible says it's them that overcome. So there's a race that is set before us according to Hebrews chapter 12. And it says here, look in verse 2, it says, Look in unto Jesus, the author, and finisher of her faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. Ye have not resisted unto bloodshed, striving against sin. So uh, when you think about that here, that Christ had a race to run, when it was his time to run the race in the particular race that was set for him, the big task that he was given, because it could be just a task, um, he was up against um, so much stress and so much pressure that he bled, he sweated blood. And then later on, his blood was spilled. And he continued running until he won. He had to lay his life down and that was the difficulty that he had to face. But he went right ahead and lay his life down. And that was the reality. So when you understand this, you understand that 
he is set there as an example. Not just that he is the payment for our sin, but secondarily, Christ is an example to us. That whatever task, whatever race that we have to run, whatever we find we are running the race. Because sometimes we could be running a race. And your race is just to get up in the morning and do these five tasks. And when you finish your day, you find you did probably two of the tasks. And you look back over your day, you realize that you were exhausted. And you say, why was I exhausted? I was exhausted because I didn't get enough sleep last night. Well, why didn't I get enough sleep last night? Probably because I ate too late. And then you sort of look back in your life, you realize it's a pattern. You can't control your eating habits. And you realize that's the task. You thought it was just getting up and getting these five tasks was your task. It's overcoming whatever is stopping you to get to your goal. And so it's the same thing. Christ had to deal with that fear. He had to um, live by the principle that he is, which is God is love. The love of humanity was more powerful than the fear of death. And so you have a race to run. You have some things that are set before you. You are going to have obstacles. Things are going to be in your way from day to day. You're going to find that you have difficulties that are going to come your way. You're going to plan your day out and then things are going to go wrong. You plan your day out and then all of a sudden you find that you have a flat or you know something that you thought you did, you didn't do. And now you throw your whole day off. And you still have a race. I, I tell you, some simple things can happen sometimes. Uh, I remember a simple thing like, you know, you 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 say, for instance, sometimes I'll use it, I'll drink smoothies, you know, or shake, you know, nut shakes. And then you make the nut shake and you walk out of the house by accident and leave it. Halfway along your way, wherever you're going, you realize, wait a minute, I don't have no food. And you have to get somewhere a certain time and do a certain task. And you're going to be there for a while. And you have to get the task done and you're, still, you're hungry. But you still have to press forward. And now it makes it more difficult. And then all you do, you remind yourself, hey, at least I'm not striving against um, to the point of bloodshed or to the point of sweating great drops of blood. It's just I'm going to go through hunger and I'm going to be annoyed straight through and I have to maintain my calm. It goes back again to self-control. So when you understand that you have to overcome your habit and failure uh, because you don't want to die this way, you understand that, yes, you have to pay your bills. Yes, you have to eat and sleep and do all these things but ultimately there's a race that is set before us there's a task that we have and in this task we are we will be given all kind of difficulties will throw away but we still have to know this is what we have to do and we can't make something um become our weakness straight through our life and we die that way we have to be able to whip it and so christ here did this for us but he's also that was his task this is why he was the savior. This is why he was who he is. This was his responsibility. We understand because the plan of salvation was wrought before man's sin. It seemed like from whatever day one was, I don't know how to explain that. Christ knew what his responsibility was. The savior of the of, of human race. So this is it. Now in Hebrews 11, because Christ is our example, but in Hebrews 11, it tells us, it recounts very, very quickly. Um, Hebrews 11, most of as you know, is a chapter that kind of gives us some of the summary of very different people like Noah. Noah had a task to do and he had a very long time to do it, 120 years. Most people at that point will give up. Think about it, the time, just the time in Noah's life that he had to prepare for the ark and be a preacher of righteousness and prepare his family. That was a very long time. Most of us, you know, are not even allotted. We are allotted normally 70 years. And we might get some extra because of strength. So Noah even had more time to accomplish whatever he was supposed to accomplish. Longer time. That's just so long. That it gives me courage and encouragement that, you know, we don't even have that long. So we need to just run a good race. Because we have a shorter race to run than even Noah himself. And even though I had to live years after that. So Hebrews 11 verse 33. We start at 33. Look at this with me here. It says, Who through faith subdue kingdoms. So he's talking about the faithful. Subdue kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtain promises, stop the mouth of lying. Notice these are tasks. These are things they had to do. If you stop in the mouth of lying, you have to overcome your fears. If you are wrought in righteousness, whatever sin that beset you, 
You have to overcome those sins because the sin will stop you from doing right. Obtaining promises. And whatever promise that was given, you obtain them. Remember, there's promises that are given in the Bible. And the Bible says, the Lord is still waiting. And you come along and say, you know what? The Lord says this and you obtain it. Joshua brought the children of Israel into the promised land. It was promised that they were going to be brought there. And Joshua said, I'll do it. And Joshua was faithful up until he died. This is the type of race that me and you, we need to run. When we run that type of race, this is why we read the Bible. So people believe that the other stories, of everything in the Bible is profitable. But when you understand your task, all of that stuff is given to you. Everything in the Bible, whether it be the Psalms or the prophecies or the doctrines or the life stories, which are the most important. All of it is given to you so that you win in this life. Whatever it is. Say all your life here, people tell you that you're a fool or tell you that you're dumb. Or tell you that you're retarded. All the stories in the Bible is given you to make you not be that person. To make people be able to. The same people who told you you were one way. After you've studied the Bible. After you receive of the word of God. of the spirit. You, they'll look at you and they'll be able to testify that you are a wise person. That's your task in life. And often as I say your task. People will echo it. Verse 34 says. Quench the violence of fire. Escape the edge of the sword, and out of weakness were made strong. Wax valiant in flight, turn the flight of the armies of the aliens. So here, remember, that while they were doing all these things with battles and wars, there was other people who were failing. Remember, most of the stories in the Bible, they come often after great depression, great oppression. The story of Moses leading the children out of Egypt and into the promised land, or, or firstly into the wilderness, is a story where Moses was leading people who were beaten down. And so you want to gain some victories in your life. When you read the stories of various different times in the judges, where the judges delivered the children of Israel, they were oppressed. That means many people came and died under the oppression and didn't do anything about it. But here comes a, ju a judge, and he says, You know what happened? We're going to fight the battles of the Lord. We're going to obtain some promises. And you need to know that. That If you look around, you look in your community, you look in your church, and the whole, everyone is moving a certain direction into failure and living, living a life of mediocrity, living a life of not overcoming their weaknesses. It, that might be their choice of life, but that is not your choice of life. You need to choose a different way of life. The way of the Bible. So when we study the Bible, the main thing we are getting is that you too can overcome whatever weaknesses. Verse 35 said, Women receive their dead raised to life again. And others were tortured not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Notice here the stories are of success. What is the success that you need? Whatever dream you had that is dead. Whatever hope that you had that seemed like it's dashed. You still can obtain because remember the Lord is greater than any of us. The Lord is above even nature. He above our lives. He can change things in a way that is phenomenal. So you have to believe this and you have to know that it says this is your task in life. This is why I say if you find yourself as a person that is not faithful, you have no faith that you're not faithful in your day-to-day -day task, the Lord can give you victory over this. The Lord can give you a way where you can start to learn in small ways to be faithful. And as your faith grow, Christ says you'll be able to remove mountain. You will say to this mountain, knowing that there's no power in your words, but there's power in your faith in God. Your faith is basically the hand that we use to grasp God and grasp his promises. So you will be able to have that faith. But it comes by starting being faithful. So somebody say you're faithless. You're not a faithful person. And you keep hearing people say that. You can't make appointments. If you say something, it's not worth a dime because you're not going to make an effort to stick to your word. You say one thing, you do another. Well, that's life. Um, many find themselves in this way. You would be unique to this. But if you start practice faithfulness, then you find that your faith will grow and you will see that you will say something and you make every effort to make sure it comes to pass. 
and all of a sudden you find Lord open ways for you and the Lord will validate and reward that faith that practical faith but this is where you go verse 36 says and others and trials of cruel mockings and scourging yea moreover of bonds and imprisonment and so notice here there's not the story of the Bible is not the modern day story of everything is going to work out fine. The story is that you will f be faced with very difficult situations, but yet still, they didn't lose hope. Now, you don't lose hope. You will go through today, and your mark of your day is that the Lord open up doors always. As I always say, the Lord doesn't have to open up all the doors. The Lord just needs to tell me what part of the wall I need to kick down, and keep kicking, and make up my own door. That's all. Lord, to give me some insight there. You don't have to always have things perfect. You know, the kind of motivation of the Bible is not a motivation where everything was working out fine for the righteous. As I say, Israel was not delivered from a middle class lifestyle to the promised land. They were not delivered from a rich lifestyle to the promised land. They were delivered from a lifestyle worse than poor. They were basically enslaved. This is worse than poverty. And so you're you're beaten and whipped and treated like an animal and you go from there to say we're going to give you great promises promises that uh, most nations should never have ever seen or hope for even to this the modern time where we're living and so when you understand it you understand that the situation that you're coming from doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to be great and you it doesn't mean tomorrow that things are going to work fine that you're going to have a way open up as a matter of fact you listen to me you run into some troubles some difficulties but that's it. That's how it's supposed to be. Because remember, everybody has difficulties in their lives. The difference is you believe that you can overcome. Others just say, oh, that's my life. It's going to always be like this. That's how I'm going to die. I'm going to die with this, this alcohol in my hand. I'm going to die with this cigarette because I can't overcome my depression. They're going to die with this marijuana because I can't overcome my depression. And the person is giving to that. And that's their life. And that would be all that they live. The difference is now you can think that same way or you can say, well, you have some difficulties. Life has basically dealt me a very terrible hand. You know, life has been rough to me, but there's God. And you start to move forward. Verse 37 says, they were stoned and they were sawed the sun. They were tempted, were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskin and goatskin, being destitute, afflicted and tormented. You know, we celebrate John the Baptist, but yet as we celebrate John the Baptist, we understand that John the Baptist went through almost the whole of verse 37. He was um, killed, slain. He was um, a person that's in the wilderness, that was destitute. He didn't have to be because his father was a high priest that was one of the top priests in the whole of Israel. He wore goat skin or leather girdled. He wore a very simple garment. This is how he lived, and yet we celebrate him. We celebrate him because it's a testimony that no matter how rough your situation is, no matter how much you're against, you can keep pressing forward. It makes you tougher. It makes you just harder. It makes me harder, at least. And, you know, you somebody say, well, you have some obstacles over there. I understand, but that's just my task in life. My task in life is to win despite all these obstacles. And so when you look at the righteous, the righteous... They're not very good, but yet that's why you need to study their stories. Because when you study their stories, you look at it and you can say, well, yeah, my life is like that. Or my life is worse than that. And then the Lord says, you see, I bless them, I can bless you. I made them great, I can make you great. And that's what you need in this life. And so we overcome our bad habit of failure in spite of the fact that life around us is difficult. But remember, we still have it free, we still have it good. Because again, if the Lord is giving you victories and is, you know, getting rid of certain bad habits out of your life, it lightens your burden, uh, the weight that so easily beset us. And so this is what you want. This is what I want. And so again, I encourage you, don't don't be beat down because today your day might go bad. You know, somebody something happened in the morning. They say, oh no, this ruined my day. No, it don't ruin your day. It gives you a challenge for the day. And you say, uh, whatever my weakness, I'm going to have to fight this weakness today. And that's the reality. And the more you do it, is the tougher you become. Because what it is, you realize, again, you fight all the way to the end of the day. And I've had it where, and you'll have it, where you're fighting 
where difficulties come in your way. And as I say, when it when it's something about when it's when it rains, it pours. And you know, difficulties come. And there are days where you fight and you fight all the way to the end of the day and you didn't fix the problem. But you know what? It made it tougher. You just keep fighting and, and you just keep trying to fix the problem. You keep kind of trying to go forward. And tomorrow you fight again. I'm going to tell you what happened. The next time the situation comes up, you're better at it because you know what happened? You fought all day before. You learned some lessons. You gained some strength. You gained some experience. And this is what it is. So sometimes, you know, we want the day to go perfect, but it doesn't go perfect. Things doesn't go the way it's supposed to go because that's life. And the moment you realize that, the better you are in this life. Of whom the world, verse 38, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens of the caves of the earth. And they all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Now, talking about overcoming, we find this concept here in Revelation chapter 20, verse 20. Revelation chapter two, 3, sorry, verse 20 through 22. So, Revelation chapter 3, verse 20 through 22. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Now, it's important to understand who's talking. This is Jesus Christ talking here, and he's saying, He'll knock at our door, normally say it's our heart door, but he'll knock at our door, we take it as it is, as it is. and he say, we'll come in and sup. Now you're having communion, so to speak. You're having a, a, a deep conversation, a deep meditation with God. And as you do that, you're talking to the overcomer of all overcomers. Remember, there's no more of a significant figure in Earth's history historically, spiritually, in any way, than Jesus Christ. And why? Because he went up against all odds and he succeeded at his task, even to the point of death. And you know, see, some people say, but he died. That's the point. When you believe in what you believe and you're willing to fight so hard to overcome whatever task you're given and you're maintaining all the discipline, the self-control, um, the mental discipline, all it is to do, and uh, you win. Even if you win, uh, you, it, it, uh, you die with it. That's, the, that's, that's why Christ is so elevated in all societies. It's the only character in the world that you look at that is like, it blows the mind. Because in most people, as I say, will sell out their family, sell out themselves, sell out their country, sell out their God for nothing, for a little money, for some food, as Esau did, this be a big sellout. So we see somebody is willing to say, if it kills me, I'm going to stand for what is right. People respect that. And if you're a person that, you know, for nothing you sell out, for nothing you'll sin, for nothing you'll just be wishy-washy and flip-flop, and you have communion with Jesus, you're communion with a person who, a, for us, not for himself, for us. He humbled himself and died for us so that we can gain a blessing. He overcame so to bless us. So when we commune with Christ, somebody said we're coming to Christ for this. And for, people come with all kind of things. I understand we're just coming to Christ because he wants us to win. Here's the rest of the text, just in case you wonder where I'm getting that from. Verse 21, to him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. Notice on his throne. Why is he on his throne? Because he overcame. Here is it. Even as I also overcame and have sat down with my father in his throne. Again, that's your task. You sit on the heron, you go do the task. You come back and the Lord say, right here, come sit right here. Verse 22. He that art in here, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. Remember the text before, the verses before this. The church is saying there's something that they're not. You see, you see, you can't say that you're good and you're not. The church, the general church era that we live in, people like to say, but they're just filled with failure. They're not overcoming nothing. This is something that we don't hear much and we don't hear talk about. I'm sure you've been in churches and you've been around people who, whatever weaknesses and sin that they have in their lives, 10 years ago they still have it. They're not growing. 
and I overcoming nothing. I always encourage everyone that I talk to that to make sure you're overcoming something. Some bad habit, whether it be verbal, whether it be mental, whether it be, you know, social, whether it be, um, you know, physical, something that you're doing regular, you know, whatever. If you have a vice, just say, God, I'm going to give this vice to you and give me the strength to fight daily until this vice is out of my life. Whatever bad habit of speaking, of thinking, if you have a recurring evil thought, something that you're daydreaming about that you need to break, give it to the Lord. I start to wrestle mentally until you break it. Whatever the bad habit of actions, whatever you do, whether you eat or you have some vice or whatever it is, say, God, I'm going to break this. Give me the power to break this. And you, and you break this, man, it will it put, like, as I say, a stripe on your shoulder. You feel so stronger in the Lord. But just think about that in your life. And ask yourself, when was the last time you broke a bad habit? When was the last time you overcome something socially? Some bad behavior, some bad way of talking. You need to be winning some of these victories because if you don't, the bigger ones, and often the bigger one, because for Abraham it was one big one, you need to break bait when it comes out to faith. If you don't break the small ones, the big one is even harder. Very important. So again, Christ says, Look, I sit down here because I overcame. I want you to sit also, but you need to overcome. In Luke chapter 9, verse 57. Luke chapter 9, verse 57 through 62. It says, And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and the birds of the here have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. So they said, Hey, Christ, I'll follow you wherever. All right? Because we all want to follow Christ. You want to follow the winner. You want to follow the person that, again, has integrity so high that it blows the mind. It will stand for the right, though. The heavens fall. And Christ says, well, foxes of hold. Now, Christ says this. He doesn't say what happened to the person. Because you know what happened to most people. This is a problem. They want to do what's right. They want to have some backbone. They want to have some integrity, some honesty. But when they're challenged... And things get tough and they have to make a decision between losing their shirt and standing for what's right. They say, well, I'll, I'll, lose, I'll keep my shirt and, you know, I'll sell myself. i eat my conscience. People eat their conscience all the time and just choose the wrong way. They sell you out and so quick they don't learn the value of people. And they'll sell you out for money, sell you out for whatever. So here, Christ says, foxes of hold. But he said, I, you know, somebody said, I thought he had a, a high standard. He said, I will follow you where, so wherever you go. At. And Christ said, yeah, sure. Right. Verse 59. And he said to another, follow me. No, Christ don't say, you come, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury the dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Another also said, Lord, I will follow thee. Let me first go bid them farewell, which is at home at my house. Jesus said unto him, No man have been put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit, of, fit for the kingdom of God. And then the next text, simple Christ depart, departed, and his disciples follow him. So it speaks to this idea here that most people will not have these type of victories. As I say, if a person is an angry person, most people die angry. I get even angrier as they get older. Most people, if they're selfish, they die selfish. And they get even more selfish and just more into themselves and hateful and distrustful of others as they get older. And so you're encouraged not to die like this. Whatever bad habits you can look back and say, you know, I've had this bad habit from when I was in my teens. It was given to me by my parents or it was given to me by myself. Or somebody say, you know, I had this bad habit from I have cognition. From I could remember, I always remember I had this bad habit. And it's now I'm in my 50s, 60s, and I still have this bad habit. Well, the Lord encourages us and says, you need to break that. You need to die with that. Don't make that become 
your you know you think that they could put it you have your your head stone and if one thing everybody could say is this person is selfish um i've even been to funerals and just somebody just can't help themselves they just go up there and they have to talk about all the bad things that the person did <laughs> you know they'll just start saying stuff you're like why are they saying this right now and in some ways it's true because sometimes the person is so known for this one thing that everybody keeps saying the same thing yeah this person was known for this next person comes yeah this person was known for this yeah this person was known. and they're like okay okay i get it person has a real bad habit with this thing <laughs> but also sometimes i think the people do it that they have a bad habit also they don't know when to you know the time and the place to speak whatever it is we have to overcome and the sad reality is that i'll be the funerals that if you follow what everybody was saying you could literally tell the person, when you do that gravestone, write it on there, on the gravestone. Just write it, that this was the person's bad habit, and everybody do them for this bad habit. And that's what they came to the funeral and whine about, about the bad habit. But that's part of the reality. So that's why it's important, that especially when it's something that sometimes the whole community know you for. You know, when when you're walking on the road, if, if this is your... This is not, not a bad habit, but a sin. But if you're walking on the road and everybody's trying to get at their children because they see you coming, fear of what you might do to the children. You need to, if you overcome that, you need to make it, make sure that there's a different perception of you uh, and so forth. Whatever that perception is, deal with it. Don't just say, oh, well, you know, what is it? We all are sinners. Yeah, sure, but the Lord calls us to overcome. Overcome something in the name of Jesus Christ. First Samuel chapter 23, verse 13 and 14. First Samuel chapter 23, verse 14 and 13 and 14 says, Then David and his men, which were about 600 and rose and depart out of Keilah, and went whithersoever they could go. And it was told Saul that David was escaped from Keilah, and he, for, and he forbade to go fort. And David abode in the wilderness in strongholds and remained in the mountains in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul sought him every day, but God delivered him into, in, not into his hand. So here the story of Saul and David. We know David was coming up. Saul was going down. What will happen here? Saul had some bad habits. Saul basically was the warrior that he claimed to be. Saul was more say, full of himself selfish and was jealous and he became david became his primary target for these weaknesses sad for david but the reality is we saw that saul had massacre the priests uh, a whole family of priests so saul you know he had a, some really serious bad habits and uh, these bad habits um he became saul became david became his target but david also had to learn some lessons and overcome some things also so while saul was chasing him david had his lessons to learn and saul had his victories to gain that he didn't sad to say so in this the story of these two men or the stories of our story we all have things that we have to overcome sometimes we torture and persecute those around us because of our bad habits because of our failure we make their life a misery uh, simply it is something that we have to deal with. We have to say, man, this is a bad habit. And let me tell you something. Bad habits don't go away that easily. You know, people talk about cold turkey of certain things. Sometimes you can cold turkey of certain bad habits. It's the truth. It's the truth. But many times you can't cold turkey of certain things. So you have to know that in your mind. And understand that you have some challenges that you have to deal with. So you have to face. And as I say, when you look at the story of David, he had challenges that he had to face throughout his life. And there are things that he was doing excellent at. And as he got older, he got tripped up. And he had to fight just the same way. You can read about that story in Psalms 51. He had to repent. He has to keep fighting onward. You have the same task. You have things that you have to deal with. As I say, King Saul had the same problem. and But the difference is Saul became you know, overcome by his weaknesses is uh, overcoming his weaknesses. And as I say, the weaknesses get so bad that he was the same failure he was using to hunt David live. That was a real reason for it. Very jealous, very 
striving to be number one, but he wasn't because again, the weakness. So don't make your life become marred by something that make you lose friends, make you lose opportunities in life, make you lose the things that the Lord put you in life to do, but you can't do it because you're so caught up. You think about how many people are going to die this week, not because of old age and because they accomplished the task in their life, but because somebody I mean, literally will kill them. Some vice, some weakness. You know, somebody like to say, you know, argue with people in the street and they go argue with the wrong person and stab them to death. And yeah, the person going to go to prison for killing them. But then the family, everybody know that, you know what happened? He couldn't keep his mouth. And because of that, he couldn't keep his life. He liked to get into arguments with people that he don't know in the street, total strangers and want to fight. And next year, you know, you go fight with the wrong person and they kill him. It's important to understand that. And when you understand, you, you can see how it's important to gain those victories because often they're the things that hurt us in life. As you're going to work with you here this morning, when you think about that, what is it that could, if you overcome it, could make it become more successful at your work? And all of a sudden you realize it's not the work so much, it's the character development that you need. Somebody say, what I need is more degrees. Probably you do to be able to move forward in your job. But still, the quality of the work you do, the, 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 the ability for you to be able to deliver good services and products, often what's holding you back is you need to overcome probably appetite. You probably just eat too much, eat all the wrong time. You're always exhausted. And so you can't function at a high level because you're just wiped all the time. And if you would overcome this one thing, you'll find that you'll be having all the energy you need and you'll find that your job will be so much better and your brain, just, even your experience, just your day-to-day -day experience will be so much better. You need to overcome this and this will be a blessing to you. And now in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 through 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 through 12, it says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses into the cloud and in the sea and did all drink and did all eat of the same spiritual rock and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. So here the Bible discuss here and describe Israel. And as it describe Israel, it describe Israel as everybody that was in Israel had the same opportunity. They all heard the same sermons from Moses. They all were led by Jesus Christ. Because some people believe Christ was leading the children of Israel in the Old Testament. They were followers of Jesus. The same Redeemer. He just hadn't come to the earth as yet. They all hear the same gospel. This they all at the same spiritual meat, whatever they were receiving, they all received it. But as it will say in a second here, that not everybody profited from it, not everybody gained the same blessing. So you, everybody hear me, you know, here this morning, and you listen to me talk, you say, okay, I hear this. You go read the Bible, you keep noticing that the first thing we learn about the Bible is that there's people who win battles, overcome, and there's people who fail also. So we all drinking of the same spiritual rock. But most will just go on in life ignoring whatever vice that is whipping them, whatever bad habit is that's making making their life and the life of those around them miserable. And they'll just say, I'm not going to overcome this. I'm not going to give this to Jesus. I'm not going to ask God for divine strength to overcome. But some will. And that's the story of the Bible that some did. And you need to be one of those people that do. Don't wait until the end of the year to do a new year. New Year's resolution. Just go right in and say, you know, Lord, give me a victory over this thing, whatever that thing is. And when you gain that victory, you will find that it lightens your life so much. It brings so much joy to you. Make the power of the gospel becomes more real to you because you see that it works. You can see how it works, as Christ says in John chapter 3, that you see the spirit moves, you see the effect of it, but you can't see it. But when you experience it, when you give it to the Lord, when you say, Lord, I'll, 
you know, I'll come by humanity with divinity. I'll fight with you, Lord. And you find, Lord, will open a way, take away the desire from you. You'll find that you gain a victory. We don't want to be, especially for those in the last days, to be like those in Israel. Oh, we walked with Moses. We hear Moses preach. We follow Christ. We saw the miracles. And it profited us nothing because we ourselves didn't profit from it. We didn't gain any victories. This is not what you want. Verse 5 says, But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. So God was not well pleased with them because they were overthrown. You don't want to be overthrown. What, what, what is it that's overthrowing you? What is it? Is, 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 is it a thought? So some, some jealousy? Some evil surmising? Is it fear? Fear because you're fearful of whatever? And it's crippling you. Whatever that thing is that is doing you in, you need to gain the, the victory. And I'm going to tell you, so when you gain the victory, others around you will see you gain the victory. They'll see a change in your life. And they'll know that you're not what you were. Because often, whatever we need to gain the victory over, it's so well ob observable by others that we think we're probably sometimes fooling people. We don't understand in private. Everybody know. We all have eyes to see. And when the change comes, Everybody will see that, oh, you made a change. You are that person that gained that victory. Somebody said, I don't like drinking water. It could be simple as that. I try to simplify it here too much, but it literally it could be simple as that. Somebody has some sexual propensities that need to be brought under control or be given to Jesus Christ altogether and abstain from. Lord said, I can give you victory in that. But you have to put your will on my side. You have to give me your heart. And you will see that it will work. Now these things were um so sorry, so now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Remember, one of the main problems that we have is lust of a material possession. The love of money is the root of many type of evils. Not all evils as is, is translated in the new in the new, in the, new in the King James Version, but many evils, right? Love of money. So when you have this thing in a person's life and they just love money and they're willing to sell anybody sell out god eat their conscience look like a fool for money the lord give you as that that's your task you gotta go overcome this thing so it says continue it said neither be idolaters as some of them of some of them as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. If that's your weakness, Bible says, the Lord can give you victory over this. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of the serpent. Neither murmur as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Again, some people that like to complain, they whiners. Just whine and whine and whine and whine and whine. And they're annoying, annoying, annoying. And they annoy the life out of everybody around them and themselves. And they're normally depressed because they're so complaining. They can't just see things and leave it alone. Or they can't just suffer through. As I say in this life, things are never going to be smooth. You wish it going to be smooth. There are some things you have to complain about. But one has to learn that, you know, some things you complain about and some things you just keep quiet about. And God will bless you. And then God won't have to try to destroy you because you're you're annoying. Verse 11. Now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore let us think it. Wherefore let him that think it, he stand it, take heed lest he fall. So you apply it again to Revelation 3, verse 21. Don't think you're something where you're not, just simply overcome. If you overcome 10 things this year, overcome one more for before the end of the year and then keep fighting on and when you overcome man it gives you a good good experience in the lord because you see the power of the gospel in your life so as i say it's important that we overcome our bad habit and failure and when we do this oh we have a beautiful experience you want to do this today and i encourage you as you start the week lay something at the feet of jesus christ confess a sin to the lord and say god give me victory over this and start fighting the lord will give you victory let's pray we thank thee again O lord for thy love towards us we thank you, dear Lord, for the power that you give us by thy gospel, by the Spirit. I pray to Father that as we see Jesus, 
their Lord bleeding. We see Jesus sweating drops of blood. We see Jesus resisting sin to bloodshed. That he may encourage us, dear Lord, that we too might enter into the fight for our salvation, being interested in our souls, just as your Son is interested in saving us. Bless us, we pray, for Christ's sake. Amen. Thanks for being with me here on Revive Reform Radio. Looking forward to talking to you tomorrow morning when we talk about the importance of church. Until then, I pray that you may continue to walk with the King. Mm -hmm.